Welcome to another short video on imaging and nuclear medicine. In today's video, we would like to talk about the statistics in photon counting experiments and its relation uh, to the Poisson distribution. So let's start with a simple thought experiment. So let's assume we have uh, a radioactive nucleus shown by the red dot here. And we have a detector that can detect single gamma rays and with a certain probability the nucleus can actually decay within a certain uh, time span delta t and if the nucleus decays it emits a single gamma ray and since uh, the radioactive decay is a stochastic process uh, it can happen that if you repeat the measurement so let's say in a parallel universe we would take the same nucleus and see what happens it can of course happen that the decay won't occur in the same time span delta t so no gamma ray will be emitted it can of course also happen that the decay occurs but the gamma ray gets emitted in a different direction so usually single gamma ray emission happens in basically isotropically in, in all directions and of course it can happen that if you are lucky uh, that the gamma ray gets emitted in the direction of the detector and the detector actually sees the event and records the event. So we can actually say that the probability that the detector detects the event has two components. The first component is the probability that the decay of the nucleus happens within delta t. So that is related uh, to delta t of course and the half-life of the nucleus. And the second component is the probability that the detector sees the emitted gamma ray so that it's dependent it depends on the angular coverage of the detector and of course also on the q detector probability okay and let's make the thought experiment a bit more complicated so instead of having one radioactive nucleus we assume we have two of them but they're both the same so they have the same physical properties so the same half-life and let's assume for simplicity that we have a detector shown in blue here that covers uh, the whole solid angle. So if an event, if a gamma ray gets emitted, we will for sure detect it. And let's choose our measurement time delta t in a way that the probability of seeing an event emitted from a single nucleus is exactly one half. But it means actually that we, the measurement time is exactly the half-life. Of the nuclei. What happens is of course that we can, or we, there are three possible outcomes, we can either record no events, we can record one event, or we can also record two events. And of course you can, knowing the probability and the number of nuclei, you can simulate that experiment with random numbers uh, on, on any computer. And if you do that, so I've done it here for uh, 100,000 experiments, you see what happens shown here in the gray histogram. So you can see the probability of seeing zero events is one over four. Same for seeing two events and the probability for seeing one event is exactly one half. And that distribution, so the distribution of the gray bars is of course perfectly described by the binomial distribution since the whole thing is a Bernoulli process. The formula is shown here. I won't uh, read it now. You can just see it. It's not very complicated to compute. And what is interesting about the binomial distribution is that the uh, expected value is n times p. So the number of nuclei at the start of our experiment times, uh, times the probability that the event will happen. And the standard deviation is the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. Okay, nothing. Uh, too surprising so far. So let's slightly modify the experiment. So what I did is instead of having two radioactive nuclei at the start, we're having 10 nuclei. So I increased the number of nuclei by a factor of 5. But at the same time, I decreased the event detection probability by the same factor by simply, for example, making the detector smaller. So it's now it's not covering the whole uh, solid angle anymore. And it means uh, n equals 10 at the beginning, but the probability dropped from 0.5 to 
So that means n times p stayed constant. So n times p is still one. But now, of course, we can have more than three outcomes. Of course, we can still see uh, zero, one, or two events, but of course, we can also see up to 10 events. It's not very likely that we will measure 10 events, but of course, that can happen. And again, you can see if you run 100,000 experiments, you see the, the distribution shown in the gray bars. And again, they're perfectly described by the blue curve, which shows the binomial distribution for n equals 10 and p equals 0.1. Of course, that is just to show you that this is always true, is we can also do the same if we would say we start with 20 nuclei and let's say the detection, event detection probability is 0.25. For example, you can say, okay, we still have a perfect detector that covers the whole solid angle, uh, but we decrease the measurement time delta t a bit. Then on average, we would expect, of course, five events, so 20 times uh, 0.25. And again, again, if you run many simulations, we see the distribution in the gray bars. And again, it's perfectly, of course, described by the binomial distribution with n equals 20 and p equals uh, 0.25, nothing to surprising so far okay then let's do the same again so we increase the number of nuclei by a factor of five and we decrease p by the same factor such that n times p stays constant so it's still five so you can see if you go back and forth that the distribution changes a bit it gets of course a bit wider so since there's a probability that we also detect more events but of course it's if p equals point, uh, point zero 0.05 it's very unlikely that we'll actually detect 100 events the Probability is finite, but it will be very small. Of course, we can go one step further. So let's increase n even further. So it's by a factor of 10. So it's 1,000 now. And then we decrease p by the same factor. So it's 0 0.005 now. So still, n times p equals 5. The distribution gets even wider. But what is interesting to see is actually that I've not only shown the binomial distribution in blue, I've shown another distribution shown in orange here, so the orange dots and the, and the dashed line. You can ex actually see that in this case, there's no difference between the blue and the orange curve, right? And the orange curve that I'm showing here is the so-called Poisson distribution. And the Poisson distribution formula is shown here in the bottom right, has only one free parameter uh, that you can call mu, for example. And if you set that parameter mu to n times p, which is five. Actually, in, in this case where p is really, really small, it's actually a very, very, very good approximation of the binomial distribution. And this is not a coincidence. This is actually a fundamental theorem. So if we have a binomial distribution and with a very small p, so if p goes to zero and at the same time n goes to infinity, such that n times p stays fine. So it just assures that, you know, Basically, um, n times p is not infinite. Um, you can see that actually the binomial distribution is, is perfectly described by the Poisson distribution. Of course, uh, they're exactly the same if this is exactly true. So if p really goes to zero and n goes to infinity. Um, if p is very small but still finite, this is a very, very, very good approximation. All right, then we can ask ourselves, so now let's not think about thought experiments, but actually let's think about the kind of uh, measurements that we do in nuclear medicines and nuclear medicine using either a SPECT system or a PET system. Is that assumption that P is very small is actually fulfilled? So let's remind ourselves what the P was. That was the probability that a gamma ray or that, so it's the probability that an event emitted from a single nucleus gets detected and that had two components. So that was the probability that the, a single nucleus decays times the probability that uh, this, the, this, the emitted gamma ray uh, actually gets detected by the detector. So the first term here is, as I said, just related to the half-life or to the decay constant of our, of our isotope. That's a physical constant. Um, and to the measurement time. And actually, if you look at the kind of isotopes that we use in nuclear medicine, that term actually is between, let's say, 5% and 50%. So this term alone is not really small. But the second term here, so the 
probability that basically gamma ray that is emitted at a certain point in the scanner gets detected by a single detector is very very small and that is because usually because we use many 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 small detectors that only so each detector only covers a very small uh, portion of the full solid angle if you would make an experiment where that probability here is close to one for example by having one huge detector then the whole assumption that p is close to or is, is, is small is not valid and in that in those cases of course the personal approximation of the binomial distribution is also not valid but as i said if we talk about a photon counting or photon detection experiments with pet inspect scanners that assumption is perfectly valid and that is why we can actually describe the distribution of uh, measured events in pet inspect by the Poisson distribution which is nice because the Poisson distribution is uh, simpler than the binomial distribution since it has only one free parameter uh, new which is also the expected value so that means if you know the expectation of our measurement we actually know the complete distribution of the results if you would repeat the measurement many many times let's have a closer look at some properties of the Poisson distribution uh, the formula is shown here again so it's e, uh, e to the power of minus mu times mu to the power of n divided by n factorial um, you can easily show that the mean of that of the Poisson distribution is mu and that the variance is also mu that means of course that the standard deviation is square root of mu and if you now divide the mean by the standard deviation which is called or sometimes called the signal to noise ratio that is also square root of mu that means if mu is higher the signal to noise ratio is higher so that means if we would for example if you would measure the activity of a point source by simply putting the point source in front of a detector a small detector and counting the number of uh, the case that we see in a certain time interval delta, delta t and then dividing by the time interval uh, that measure will get more precise the more uh, the more events we collect so if you want to have a high precision measurement in well in, in nuclear physics or nuclear medicine that usually means you should acquire data for a longer time or you should acquire more data and the snr increase goes with the square root of mu Another interesting, it's not really a property, but if you just take the logarithm of the Poisson distribution, which will become useful when we will talk about maximum likelihood reconstruction, is then you see that the, the log of the distribution is simply minus mu plus n times log mu minus log n factorial. And finally, let's uh, just discuss a very short example. So let's assume we have a radioactive source in front of a detector and the radioactive source emits a thousand photons per second so that's the activity of the source and let's assume that the half-life of the source is very very long compared to our measurement time of four seconds so that actually means that the activity of the source doesn't change over four seconds and let's also assume that detection sensitivity uh, is 0.1 percent so then I could ask how many uh, detected events do we expect in a single four second measurement um, or actually how many events would we detect on average if we do many of those measurements and the solution that is just it's the number of decays that we expect to see so this is a thousand times four so four thousand times the probability that uh, the emitted radiation gets seen by the detector which is 0 0.001 if you multiply those four numbers we get a mu of 4 and then of course if you know mu we can also calculate the standard deviation which is the square root of the value which is then 2 the second interesting question would be to calculate the prob probability that at least two photons are detected in a single four second measurement and that can be done by just uh, remembering that the probability of n greater equal to is of course 1 minus the probability of n equals 2 plus the probability of n equals 1 and if you put in the numbers you can see that that probability, 
probability is 1 minus 5 times e to the minus 4, which is roughly 0.91.